Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio with another Solo Mode review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Solo Mode for Calico from designer Kevin Russ and publisher AEG Games. In Calico, you're trying to craft the most enticing quilt to bring a selection of cats onto it. Also sewing some buttons on there to make it even more attractive. Let's head on over to the table, I'll show you quickly how it's played, then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we have a setup for a solo game of Calico, and the way the game is being set up here is coming from the scenarios portion of the rule book here. This is the first scenario, and it basically tells you which scoring tiles you would play with, which of the three cat uh, tiles you would play with, and any achievements you have to uh, achieve to be considered a victorious. And in this case, I would need to have at least 58 points by the end of the game and have a rainbow button, which means that I've gotten one of every color of button. And I'll explain that here in a minute. But otherwise, it really doesn't change at all from a multiplayer game of Calico. There's one small rules difference that I'll talk about, but essentially you are playing the game exactly the same as you would in a multiplayer game. Uh, it's just that you're trying to reach certain thresholds to be considered uh, victorious or not. So what you would do is, I started with these two random patch tiles here, and I've got these three scoring tiles, which basically are ways that you are arranging your tiles onto the board to try to get the most points. And both of them have two scoring thresholds, the blue and the yellow. And if you achieve both, you would get the, the yellow larger point value. If you achieved one, you would get the smaller blue. So in this case, you have A, A, B, B, and C, C both for color and for pattern. So what it's saying is three pairs. And if you got three pairs with different colors and different patterns, you'd get the 11 points. If you got three pairs with either colors or patterns, you'd get the seven. And it's similar here, three of one kind, three of a different, and completely not the same, all different in this particular scoring tile here. And so what you would do on your turn, is you take one of the two patch tiles that you have, and you place it anywhere on your board. There are no rules as far as where you place them, any open spot. So let's say, for example, I wanted to start working towards maybe a, well, let's see, I see a yellow tile here I can draft on this turn. So let's put this yellow tile right here, okay? Then what I do once I've played one of my tiles is I choose one of these three from the row. And I want that yellow because I want to get a yellow button on my next turn. So say I grab that. Now what's going to happen is, this is the only thing that's different, is the tile that is the rightmost, the furthest away from the bag here, is going to get discarded. It's out of the game. This slides down, and I draw two more out of the bag to refill the row. Simple as that. Now on my next turn, what I might do is play this yellow that I just took, and now I'm checking to see if I have fulfilled any cat bonuses or buttons. And so I have three yellow tiles. So I would take this yellow button and place it on one of those. Okay. The other thing that I'm potentially looking at is I've got two of these kind of vertical stripe patch tiles next to each other. And if I can get five of them in a group, then I can bring coconut out onto the board. It's going to give me seven points at the end of the game. So it's, it's just con con continues to play like that where, uh, let's see, I would draft this, this would get discarded. This would slide down. We'd get two more, and you continue building your patchwork quilt, trying to attract the kitties onto the board, trying to get uh, as many of the buttons onto, the, uh, onto your quilt as possible. Because I know for this particular first scenario, I need to be able to get this rainbow button, in addition to 58 points, I believe it was total, to be able to be considered successful in the game. And so the way you do that is through scoring the scoring tiles, getting as many of these kitties to come onto your, uh, to get out, come onto your quilt as possible and getting all of those different colored buttons out so that you could eventually bring out this rainbow button. It's very simple in this setup. Now, what I did here was just showed you a beginner setup. 
there's a lot of variability in the way the game is played. So you can have an advanced setup. You can have some of these more advanced uh, scenarios. As you see, as you move further along, more and more things have to happen. Different types of cats with higher points thresholds. You have to be able to get a certain number of the scoring tiles completed. They obviously get more and more complicated as the game goes on. And as the game goes on as well, you bring out this cat scoring tiles that are a little bit trickier uh, to pull off. So that I think gives you a pretty good idea on how the solo game is played. Let's head on over and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how the solo mode for Calico plays out. The first thing I'd like to do is talk about some solo benchmarks. These are things that I like to discuss when reviewing the solo mode for a game. The first thing is win conditions. Is there a clear win-loss condition? Are you playing against a rival opponent? Is it a beat your high score variant, etc.? What Calico does is a, a bit of a high score variant, but with a twist. And what I'm saying here is that essentially when you play with the scenarios, which is definitely the way I would suggest to play the solo game, you've got a score threshold that you're trying to reach, but there are also other things you have to consider. So it might be a certain number of uh, a certain layout of cats. You may need to get a particular number of scoring tiles. You may need to get a certain range within those scoring tiles. And so I think for a puzzle game like this, which Calico is essentially a puzzle game, I think that this is a perfectly uh, acceptable and honestly preferred way to play a solo game. This is not the type of game that needs a rival AI, a rival quilter that you're playing against. I think for a puzzle game like this, it's really good to have these types of benchmarks, these things you're trying to reach, these, these goals that you're trying to reach. Strictly a score threshold, I mean, that would work, uh, quite honestly, but this is even better because it gives you more things to think about. It's not strictly, hey, get 58 points and you're successful. No, it's get 58 points plus get all of the different colored buttons on there and play with these three cat scoring tiles, which can change up some of the tactical nature of how you play the game, the way the, the different cats make you focus on different things, but potentially it might be particular patterns that you're trying to get, or it might be different numbers of tiles of the same pattern you're trying to get out there. So it changes your decision space. And so I think for this puzzle game, this high score variant with those achievements works very, very well. I also like to talk about setup and teardown. And the setup and teardown in Calico is a breeze. There's really not much to it. You take your board, you determine which cats you're gonna be playing with, which scoring tiles you're gonna be playing with. You get those out there and you're ready to go. It, it takes minutes to get the game set up. It doesn't take long to tear it down. It plays very quickly, so that's important. If this was a game that had a longer setup and it still only played 20, 30 minutes, that's not a good ratio, but it's perfectly fine in Calico. The setup and teardown is not long at all. I also like to talk about rules. And in the solo game for Calico, the rules are laid out clearly. They're in their own section of the rule book at the end of the rule book, as they typically are. Uh, solo game rules are usually at the back of the rule book. But I really think that they went a little bit beyond here because those achievements, they can be played in a multiplayer game as well. But to my mind, those really are what make the solo game shine. And I almost feel like they were put in there for the solo game. That's just conjecture, but it also works well in the multiplayer game and adds even more variability to a game that inherently has a lot of variability built in. So I think the rules were clear. I had no issues with ambiguities and I really, really think that those achievements add that extra spice to the game that, uh, that, that sets it apart. So the overall solo experience, what did I think about Calico? Well, first things first, uh, I know that there might be some discussion of this being a potentially uh, polarizing theme, okay? Because there have been a number of games about cats. There even have been a number of games about quilting and patchwork and things along those lines. However, I don't really think it's a great argument to make that there are too many cat games or too many quilting games because, look, 
there's a long way to go before we're starting to get into the realm of fantasy games or zombie games or things along those lines, okay? Just because there have been a number of cat games in the recent years and a number of quilting games or, or things you know related to that, I don't think that there's any danger of these types of themes overtaking trading in the Mediterranean, fantasy themes, even science fiction or space themes. I think the theme is charming. Obviously, I do like cats. I'm on the record as that. So it appeals to me just on that base level. But even if I didn't, I still consider this a unique theme, even though there have been a number of those types of themes in the, in the recent years. I still consider Calico to be a unique theme, and I think it works well with what is essentially an abstract puzzle. I think quilting works well with an abstract puzzle because many times quilts have that appearance of the patterns, okay? So I'm very happy with the theme. I think that it is immersive and it helps me feel like I'm, I'm bringing these cats onto my lovely quilt that I've created such an enticing space for them. So I like the theme for the game. I like the puzzle element to the game. Uh, I think that there have also been a number of relatively short puzzle games in the solo game sphere and in the multiplayer game sphere as well. So it's getting harder and harder to stand out in this genre because more and more of them have come out. But I do feel like that Calico has done that. I think that they do some things differently that, that I think that the game does some things differently that helps it stand apart. One of the things that I think that does stand apart is the variability in the game. There's a tremendous amount of variability just in the sense of the different cat scoring tiles, how those, how the cats come onto your uh, quilt, the different scoring tiles on your board can really change things up. When you add in those different achievements and scenarios, there's a whole lot of variability and modularity almost to the game. And I really appreciate that in Calico. I think that it is a it's something that if the game didn't have that, it could feel a little bit one note. Uh, because essentially, you're just placing one tile on a board a turn. That's all you're doing. Placing one tile, checking about scoring, drafting another tile. That's all there is to it. The actual mechanisms are remarkably simple, but there's a nice decision space. Every turn, there's a nice decision space. Now, it's primarily tactical. There's not a whole lot of strategy you can really take because you can't see ahead enough. You can do some, you do have to do some longer term planning thinking, okay, well, I need to get a series of five of this particular pattern. So I'm not going to draft that tile right now because I really would wait for an, I'd rather wait for another pattern to come up. So there is a little bit of long-term planning, but it's mostly going to be tactical decisions that you're making. And I feel like they're satisfying tactical decisions. So all of that being said, the theme that I feel is, is quite engaging. The components, which are gorgeous components. Lovely art by Beth Sobel. I, I think that the aesthetic appeal of the game is very high. Now, again, that may be subjective. It is subjective. But for me, it really is a, a lovely aesthetic and a beautiful design. Nice, sturdy components. That, that, that dual layer board, I think, is basically essential. Uh, I, I'm not sure how well the game would have worked if that was not there. Thankfully, I don't have to wonder because it is there and I think that it's all the better for it. Um, all of these things are very much a positive. It plays quickly. Uh, it's easy to teach. It's easy to learn. It's easy to pull down from the shelf and get it played and put it back and you feel like you've had a, a satisfying experience. The actual solo game is very similar to the two-player game. It's essentially a multiplayer solitaire game uh, as a multiplayer game. So it obviously works well as a solo game. All of those are reasons that I think that Calico is a game that I can easily recommend. I'm giving it an eight out of 10. And that says something in an increasingly crowded puzzle solo game space. Thank you so much for your time as always, and have a great day.